the Obamacare. Uh, obviously, I think the intent was that people should get coverage if they don't have it. Uh, so maybe you could argue that the merits uh, are there to try to develop the system. But I know you're the kind of lawmaker who likes to pay for things if you're going to spend the money. And it seemed quite clear, I remember the quote from uh, Nancy Pelosi, Speaker of the House, uh, talking about uh, at the time, you'll find out what's in the bill when we pass it uh, or after we pass it. So now the, the point is it seems to be a lot more expensive than anybody envisioned. The program still hasn't been fully implemented. What do we do about that uh, you know, huge cost that still hasn't quite hit the bottom line yet? It's a $2.6 trillion over 10 year cost to the American taxpayer that worsens the worst problems of health care. And as a practicing physician, What's the worst, worst problem? Is everybody thinks somebody else is paying their bill. There's no consumer-directed behavior in terms of purchasing the health care. Therefore, what happens is nobody is frugal with their health care dollars, except those persons who happen to be not covered. And when everybody's covered, thinking somebody else is paying the bill, the costs are going to skyrocket. And they already have. I mean, we've seen costs go up this year much higher than they did last year in anticipation of this bill's cost. As a physician who then ran for office and also an entrepreneur, you have an idea about the bottom line effects uh, of health care costs on businesses as well as from running your own medical office. What would you recommend to be done to resolve the problem? Uh, obviously, there are a lot of folks in Congress who would like to see everybody get coverage. Uh, the question is paying for it and how best to do it, whether it's through a private system or a public system. Uh, with your expertise, what would you recommend? Well, can you tell me anything right now that works efficiently run by the federal government? I think a lot of people would hard, be hard pressed to find Right, find one program that's efficient. I, I can't, I, I've been up here eight, almost eight years. I can't find one program that's both efficient and effective. Some are effective, but I haven't found one that's efficient. So the first assumption is having the federal government run anything is crazy. Our founders knew that. I mean, that's why they wrote for a limited government, that, that they knew what the limited role. Government is necessary. Rules and regulations are necessary. But having the government take over one-sixth of our economy and think they can do it better than what a true market. Our problem with health care is we've never had real market forces since World War II controlling the cost of health care. And, and it, there, there's two areas in our economy today where we have abandoned the free enterprise system with its earned success and rewards. One is education, and we're failing because the government has essentially taken over education, and the other is health care. Well, yeah, I mean, there's five studies out there right now that show 800 to $850 billion a year in health care. One third of everything we spend in health care doesn't help anybody get well and doesn't prevent anybody from getting sick. Why do you think that is? It's because there's no market forces allocating that resource. There's no, everybody thinks somebody else is paying their medical bill. And when, when we think that, and if I'm a provider taking care of you, and I don't worry about the cost, because none of it's uh, seemingly coming out of your pocket, then I'm not frugal or efficient. And to say that all of a sudden the government can control all of this, which is what the Affordable Care Act essentially does, moves it to where the government's actually in control of the vast majority of 75% or 80% of it, it is like what we're trying to do with the Affordable Care Act is Sovietize the American health care system. And I want to tell you, it didn't work out well for the Soviet system. The bureaucracy doesn't work. The, the bureaucracy does what's safe, not what's best, always. They never do what's best. They always do what's safe for the bureaucracy. And we're, 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 what we're going to do is accentuate the, the, the errors that we've made in health care with the Affordable Care Act. So what my hope is that the Supreme Court strikes it all down and that we wake up and say, is there a better way to allocate $2.6 trillion in our economy better than having rules and regulations and having a tax code that says if you get insurance with your employer, you don't pay taxes on it, but if you, you're not fortunate enough to have your employer offering health care, you have to pay taxes on the money first before you can buy health care. I mean, we discriminate in health care, but it's because we haven't allowed the market forces. In the, in the book, I talk about the Amish, because the Amish don't have insurance. Therefore, they're the best purchaser. They don't think somebody else is paying for their health care. They think, they think and know that they are paying for their health care. Consequently, they're very prudent with their health care. Now, accidents happen, sometimes they can't apply market forces. But the vast majority of the time, 
they're thinking about the connection between the money in their pocket and what something costs and whether or not it's necessary, adequate, and realistic for them.